Okay, today we are gonna paint the birch trees. So uh, I'm actually excited that this is probably the first painting I've ever done that we're gonna cover the whole thing pretty much in real time. Um, so yeah, today's session, we're gonna look at resolving the rest of these birch trees. Uh, so if you wanna see that, stick around. Okay, so I'm using the same color palette um, that I used in the last piece to do the birches. I've just mixed a few variations um, that are slightly darker for as we move away from the birches. And I'm going to start actually up near the top with the darkest. That's probably a little bit too dark. So that initial, uh, what I, the whole concept of these birches is that they're actually darkest right in the center of the birch where it's getting no light on it. On the side towards the sun, it's getting that diffraction effect that we talked about. So that lighter, um, warmer tones hitting the birch as it goes towards the sun. But on the shadow side, it's getting reflected light. So things that are hitting stuff on the other side and bouncing back into the birch. Um, and then it's also getting, um, as every object does, outdoors. Um, it's like if you think of it being under a blue fluorescent light or whatever color the sky happens to be, um, that light from the sky is falling on everything. So everything that's not being struck by that intense, bright, um, light of the sun is getting that light bluish influence um, from the sky. And so again, the whole idea here is I'm just, let me clean my brush because I've gone from purples to kind of pinks without cleaning my brush. You can see where I've mixed in with the kind of lighter orangey tones there. It's going gray because purple and orange or purple and yellow basically uh, give you a gray tone. And what I have to do now here is to kind of merge this part I had going on here um, with the close-up of the sun with what's going on coming down from higher up in the birches. Uh, so you see I've already kind of had to subtly adjust that. Um, but the process here for the birches in general is basically the same as as it was for the birches near the sun. Just continually gets a little warmer and lighter on this side of those new that kind of purpley strokes, and on the other side it will get lighter and bluer. And if we do this effectively, now here you probably can't see it. Um, the camera probably can't pick it up, but we've got some of these green cedar boughs poking in front of the birch tree. So that's why, why I'm not painting solidly up here. There's some of these trees that are coming in front and I'll have to go in later and lighten those. Again, need to clean my brush. Whenever I go from, again, I can go from purple to magenta without cleaning my brush, but when I start going into the oranges, uh, those peachy tones. If I don't clean my brush, then I'm going to get a uh, just a gray because purple and orange or yellowy orange are near complements and they will just go grayish. So again, the one tricky part here is kind of merging these two elements together. That's why I typically, I don't take it normally as close to finish as I did. Um, in here on yesterday's video, but I did want to be able to kind of show that all in one video. Okay, and I need to darken up the, uh, the purples and the blues in here as it approaches the sun. 
so that it again so that it relates to kind of this gradation that's going on up here and this is this is all just a, it's a continuing subtle kind of back and forth um, until it looks right um, and it's, again you want that kind of smooth gradation from yellows to peaches to kind of more rosy colors and then into mauves and purples and then into the blues on the other side so it's tough doing that um, the sun that we did last time it's tough doing it in isolation when it's not related to what's happening above and below um, but now that we're kind of merging the two together now i have to be aware that they it, it has to look like a natural gradation it can't look like the the birches near the sun were painted one way and the rest of the birches were painted another or at another time it has to look as though it was all done at the same time and that's why i often end up having to come back in several times to adjust things because everything looks everything's relative so everything looks different when you put other things on the canvas near it yeah oh okay sorry uh i'll be back in one sec my son scott's heading out for the weekend okay we're back just had to give him a hug goodbye um and yeah, where was i yeah just continuing again this is kind of i guess sometimes i know you need to see things over and over they say the best way to kind of learn something is to, is to hear it multiple times um and i think this will be a few times now i've kind of got into painting the birch trees uh, but i i do think it this is a really good idea of doing pretty much an entire painting uh, in real time on the on the vlog um, and that also can give you a sense too of how you know how long it takes me to do a painting because I've actually shown most of this on camera there's been a few times where it just because of time I thought okay I'm just doing more of the same I'll cut out for now and come back when it's done um, but yeah this is probably about I don't know three and a half hours worth of total painting time okay now i'm going to come in on the other side with a more bluish tone and it's a lighter tone than the purple and again everything needs to continue to get a little bit lighter as we come down towards the sun so not only those warm colors um, get you know more intense and warmer and lighter but the blue also has to get lighter as does the purple and every other color in there and i think what i'm going to do be, I'm, i don't think i'm there's any point in me painting all of these birch trees in real time because as i say when you've seen me do one You've seen me do another, but what I am going to do is take this particular birch tree to total finish um, for today's episode, and then I'll finish the rest of them off camera, just because it probably is going to take me an hour and a half to paint all of these birches. And not only do you probably not want to see me painting birches for an hour and a half, I don't want to be talking for an hour and a half while I'm painting. I think I mentioned it last vlog that yeah painting in general is draining um, but when you're trying to talk at the same time and articulate what you're doing and why um, then it makes it even more draining um, yeah so i think that i have found for me like a little half hour half hour increments or 20 minutes of painting and talking at the same time is about all that i can do before i uh, start getting a little punchy and also start making mistakes and that I don't want to do
Okay, so you can see already that birch is uh, starting to take shape. And I work kind of from that darkest tone in the center of the birch, kind of, and I gradually approach these lightest, warmest tones on the sun side and those lightest, coolest tones on the shadow side. Um, as I've mentioned before, it's always easier to go lighter in oils. It's very difficult to, to go darker. Often you have to wipe off and start again. So I would rather have it take me a few more, a few more applications of paint to get it where I want it to be in terms of how light or how dark than to go too light at the start and then have to go in and repaint an entire area. And again, this I've often found that sometimes the faster I try and do this, the better, uh, because I like it when the brush strokes are still left. If, if you spend too much time um, on them and over mix and over mix and over mix, and you can end up getting rid of all the brush work and it can just be like a perfectly smooth gradation. Now that also can be effective. Uh, I think it just comes down to a matter of taste what you like more, but I, I tend to like more the effect when, um, when the brush work shows, cause that's just the suggestive of texture. And you can see here, this comes down to that shape comes out like a bulge in the tree. So I'm just going to take, take my Q-tips now and clean up actually both sides of it. I can't really see where the tree is because everything's so dark in my, uh, in this area of the canvas, but I do want that line to continue down straight. So that edge, okay, that's better. Okay. So what do we need to do here? I still need to finesse this area around the sun. So I want that light, light yellow, because it comes out like a circular shape, but then there's also like a line that kind of follows along the front edge of the tree where it kind of picks up the light. And I will actually get in there and paint a rim light um, on both sides with using the rigger brush, but I do want to get this kind of a little closer to these lights on this side of the tree to where they need to be before I go in and worry about doing the rim light. That is getting pretty close. To uh, the finish of, of where I will come in and paint the rim lights. I just want to do a little brighter, more of an orangey pinky color. On the sunward side. Okay, that's actually looking pretty good. Now I'm gonna get in and do the rim light. And if you've seen prior videos, that's using a rigger brush, which is a very long, thin, tapered brush. So I'm gonna paint that rim light basically pure white, where it passes in front of the sun. And then it's gonna be more of a yellow as it moves away from the sun and then turning into a light orangey tone, much warmer, but still needs to be lighter than the, uh, the paint that's already there on the birch tree. And it could probably be even a little bit lighter than that.
And then as we move away, same thing, it gets a little, it gets darker as the actual the body of the birch gets darker and it turns kind of, it goes less from being in an orange to a light pink shape. Just because if I were to put this yellow up here, it would be really, really harsh. It could stand to be a little warmer, I think. You have the option too when you come to these scars of having the rim light go in front or sometimes stop. Uh, sometimes if it's if it's a scar that really sticks out, I'll just let the rim light stop. Uh, and then sometimes I'll put it over, but let's put it over here just so you can see what I mean. Okay, so there. Because you actually are going to get a rim light on every area that's uh, that's um, on that edge. Technically, where it goes over the uh, dark, the rim light might be darker and a little bit more red as opposed to white um, in real life. But I find it doesn't really make a difference when I'm doing it in a painting, particularly a small painting like this. If this was a large painting and that was a big birch, then I might actually adjust the rim light color so that it is um, more red and a little darker where it goes over the birch scars. But in a painting this small, you can sometimes get too fancy. Um, and again, it's a small painting, so sometimes simpler is better. Okay, so we're putting the, uh, the blue on the shadow side. That was maybe a little bit too light for up here. And it's like, how light or how dark does it have to be? Well, the answer is light or dark enough. And that's kind of, that, that's just your eye. You need to be able to judge that. Does it look right? Or does it look like it's too light or too blue or what have you? I can't tell you what that is. All I know is, and even I can't necessarily get it correct. Uh, just mixing it on the palette. I have to see it on the actual painting to judge if it's light enough or dark enough. So that's actually looking pretty good, but as it does get down close to the sun, then it does need to be extremely light. Okay, and almost, almost white on the backside as well but with a little bit of that turquoise mixed in with it. And it actually, if you look at my very first birch trees that I did, um, you won't see any of that rim light. That was something that I kind of, uh, again, playing the what if game. It's like, well, what if I did this? How would that look? And it was actually, I remember the very first painting I did it where I put the rim lights on. Um, people didn't know why, but they liked that a lot more than the other birch ones they'd seen. And so I was like, okay, I actually liked it too and thought it really added to the, to the pop and the punch of the birch trees. But when you're getting that sort of feedback from other people as well, that's usually a good indicator that you're onto something. Okay, just need to lighten it a little bit. Up top. Okay. And that is pretty much done, that birch tree. I may get in here and do a little bit of finessing at the end of the painting. Uh, but once again, I can't, I can tell you that that is 95% done, but I can't tell you if it is exactly where it needs to be because how this tree looks will change when I finish this tree, this tree, this tree. So I always only like to take these, these uh, trees. I never would normally take a, a tree entirely to finish um, by itself, I would bring all of the trees up to kind of like, you know, 80% done and then look at, do I have to adjust the colors, values, whatever of any of them. And only then once I'm happy with all of them, then I go in and put the rim lights in on all of them. So I'm going to do that off camera. Oh, you can see me here. I'm going to do that off camera. Um, and the next video that we do, I will have completed all of the birches. I will, and then there's just, I have to lighten some of these greens and then it gets into unifying the painting um, and putting dots of color on there. 
um, to bring it from what's probably a pretty good looking painting to bring it to its full potential. So we'll do that next time. So I hope you found this helpful. As always, if you have, give me a thumbs up. Uh, please share this with your artist friends or anyone else you think would enjoy it. Um, I welcome your comments and questions, and I will see you next time. I'm Tim Packer, and I thank you for your time.